Hey guys, this is Emily speaking, and today we're going to be talking about patent ductus arteriosus. So let's begin. First, let's start with some multiple choice questions to see what we already know. Question one. Is PDA a cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? A, acyanotic, B, cyanotic, C, both. Think about whether it causes a right to left or a left to right shunt. The answer is A, acyanotic. Question two. Where is the ductus arteriosus located? A, between the pulmonary vein and aorta. B, between the left and right atrium. C, between the pulmonary artery and aorta. Or D, at the liver and IVC junction. Think about the function of it during fetal development. The answer is C, between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Question three. What type of murmur does PDA create? Is it A, early diastolic, B, pansystolic, C, ejection systolic crescendo decrescendo, or D, machine-like continuous? Think about whether it's in systole, diastole, or continuous. The answer is D, machine-like continuous. The murmur created by PDA is a machine-like continuous murmur. So what is a patent ductus arteriosum? Today we're going to talk about what that is, the symptoms and history, investigations and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips, and then finally summary, and we're gonna go back over the previous MCQs to see whether we can get them all right. Okay, let's start. What is a patent ductus arteriosus? A patent ductus arteriosus, or PDA, is the persistence of the vascular structure which connects the main pulmonary artery to the aorta, allowing blood to bypass the lungs in utero. It protects the lungs against circulatory overload, and it usually closes in the first 48 hours after birth. If it doesn't, it can result in heart failure. In an adult, the remnant is known as ligamentum arteriosum, Here's an example. Here we can see the aorta, the pulmonary arteries, and here is the patent ductus arteriosus, allowing blood from the aorta into the pulmonary arteries. During development, blood is shunted right to left, going from the pulmonary artery to the aorta because pressure is higher in the pulmonary artery. This allows the lungs to be bypassed. As you can see here, this is a normal adult, and this is during development. Oxygenated blood comes in from the placenta into the right atrium, and through the foramen nervale into the left atrium, it goes down into the aorta, or into the right ventricle, into the pulmonary artery, and a small amount goes to the lungs, but most of it goes through the ductus arteriosus and into the uh, aorta. After birth, the pressure changes and the pressure is higher in the aorta. So blood moves from the aorta to the pulmonary artery to re-enter the lungs. This means no deoxygenated blood goes around the body. So here we can see after birth. So it comes from the lungs into the uh, left atria, into the left ventricle, into the aorta, and then some of it will go into the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. This is why it's an acyanotic heart defect. Let's quickly go over fetal circulation. The fetus receives all nutrition and oxygen via plac the placenta and waste products and CO2 are sent back via the umbilical cord and the placenta to be eliminated via the mother's circulation. Three shunts are in the fetal circulation. The foramen ovale, which moves oxygenated blood from the right atrium to the left atrium. Two thirds of the blood passes through here, right ventricle and lungs. The ductus arteriosus moves some of the remaining third of blood from the pulmonary artery to the aorta, so only a small amount reaches the lungs. The ductus venosus, sphincter, this is a sphincter that constricts to pass most of the highly oxygenated blood directly to the inferior vena cava by passing the liver. This ensures only a small amount goes to the liver. So, the blood comes from the placenta 
into the umbilical vein, through the ductus venosus, into the liver or the inferior vena cava. And then from there it goes into the right atrium, through the foramen ovale, or into the uh, right ventricle. And if it goes through the foramen ovale, it goes from the left atria into the left ventricle, up through the aorta and to the rest of the body. So what symptoms can we see in a patient with a patent ductus arteriosus? Most of them present within three to five days after birth when the duct begins to close. If it's a small defect, then the patient may be asymptomatic. If it's moderate, they may get congestive heart failure with failure to thr thrive, which is poor feeding. If it's large, poor feeding, severe failure to thrive, recurrent lower respiratory tract infections are common. Other common symptoms are tachypnea, shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, obviously this would be for an older patient, apnea, irritability and diaphoresis. Preterm infants may have failure to wean from ventilation. We're going to go through some histories now. Let's see if you can pick out the parts which you think are important for this patient. So we'll go through that after. So the first one, a one and a half month old infant girl is brought to the paediatrician for poor feeding and poor weight gain. She sweats with feeds and tires easily. She is tachypneic and uninterested in bottle after a few minutes. Grade four continuous murmur and early diastolic rumble heard best at apex. Bounding pulses. Liver is three centimetres below costal margin. Chest x-ray reveals enlarged heart with prominent main pulmonary artery segment and increased pulmonary markings. So hopefully you'll be able to pick out the parts from that one which you find interesting for this diagnosis. The second one's not as easy, so we'll see what you think. A 20-week-old premature boy treated with surfactant However, on the second day of life has worsening respiratory distress with increasing ventilatory requirements. He has apneic ep episodes and has some bloody stools. He has bounding pulses and a grade three systolic ejection murmur can be heard in the left infraclavicular area. His abdomen is distended and on chest x-ray, his lung fields are almost completely opacified. So what did you think of that one? Do you think you'd be able to tell in, in an exam whether that was a PDA? Patients, a lot of the time, can be asymptomatic, um, but they can also have significant heart failure, and they may present later in life with pulmonary hypertension. It really depends on the size of the PDA and whether the baby's premature or not. Premature infants with a significant PDA present very early in infancy with a murmur or signs of heart failure. If they're full term, they can present with the same as premature, or they may not present until later childhood with mild exercise intolerance, if the a, um, PDA is smaller. So what investigations are we going to do then for these patients? First of all, an echocardiogram. This is the gold standard diagnostic test. In 2D and colour Doppler, you can see evidence of a PDA. It can also show diastolic flow reversal and the left side of the heart if it's enlarged. A chest x-ray isn't very sensitive. Um, it may be completely normal in patients with a PDA. It may show cardiomegaly and increased pulmonary markings, but it's not a very good diagnostic tool for this. Also, an ECG isn't very sensitive and may be completely normal. Here we can see a picture of an echo. As you can see, the blood flow, this shows a PDA. With what we've talked about so far, what do you think the differential diagnoses will be? Maybe pause here and see if you can think about some. A venous hum, coronary artery fistula, which is a continuous murmur, but it's often heard lower in the pericordium. VSD and ASD, a similar clinical history, ECG and chest x-ray. However, murmur of left to right shunts are heard in systole, and that's how you can tell the difference. Also, aortic regurgitation. This normally is present at an older age with exercise intolerance, so it wouldn't really be seen in a newborn baby. Clinical examination. Let's palpate. Hepatomegaly may be found from heart failure, although this will be from a severe PDA. You 
We'll normally find bounding peripheral pulses. This is when it feels like the heart is beating really hard. You can feel it almost jumping out from the skin where the pulse, pulse places are. A systolic thrill. Oscillation. you can hear a widened pulse pressure. There will be a machine-like continuous murmur. This is also called Gibson's murmur and can be heard at the upper left sternal border below the clavicle. The third heart sound can be heard at the apex. Early diastolic rumble can be heard as well at the apex. And there will be low diastolic blood pressure. So some OSCE tips for you. When listening to murmurs, try and differentiate when you can hear them. Are they in systole or are they in diastole? If you can hear it constantly, consider a PDA. Maybe go online and look at some videos of murmurs, listen to the differences and really test yourself on them. So in summary guys, let's go back over the questions from before and see whether you've learnt everything. Is a PDA a cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? It's acyanotic. Where is the ductus arteriosus located? What do we think? It's between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. What type of murmur does PDA create? It's machine-like continuous. Well done guys, that's the end of the slideshow. Come back for some more revision material. I hope you've enjoyed this.